Wahnsinn.
to wine. It makes all things possible, and he is a friend of mine. Blessed Jesus, he's the one who can heal the heartache that is crushing you within. Who can pour the balm of heaven where the heart has been? Who can chase the shadows, make the songs of joys begin? It is Jesus, he's the one. Jesus holds our power in his mighty hands divine. He's the one who healed the sick, turn the world's hurry to wine. He makes all things possible, and he is a friend of mine. Blessed Jesus, he's the By the stage is set for something wonderful tonight. Yes. Don't you feel something is about to happen? Yes. Because that blessed Jesus, before we all got here, we have prayed and we know that um, he was here before us. Yes. So he's the one that you have come to. Thank you, Sister Tope, for that um, solo. We're all going to sing together in a bit, and can it be? Um, a song that we don't have in our hymn book that will be projected for us to sing. Um, we also like to appreciate the choir giving us every time I feel the spirit. I'm proud that we had um, Yanu Okusanya introducing the UK Children's Orchestra. Um, those are our children that are learning music in their different branches. It is the prayer of our heart that the Lord will keep them. Amen. The Lord will turn them to be pillars and posts Amen. in the gospel Amen. and at last establish them Amen. and make them fit for heaven Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And can it be is our first song and Sister Emma is our song leader.
Perhaps there's someone here whose chains have not yet been broken. Jesus is here to do the same business. Because of that, we are going to sing, He is able to deliver me. And that is from SSNS 848. SSNS 848. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Verses 1 and 3, God. Tis the grandest thing. Tis the grandest thing for immortal. Tis the grandest thing for the son of God. He is able to make a way. 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 before prayer in Christ alone. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and then verse 4. We'll stand to sing. After that, we'll be led in prayer. 1, 3, and 4. in prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for the many manifold blessings you will be pouring upon us since the start of this camp meeting. We are looking unto you tonight. 
because we perform wonders. Amen. Some are here tonight that they are afraid of death because there are sins in their heart. Tonight, Father, deliver. Amen. Tonight, Father, deliver. Amen. Some are bound by the enemy of their soul. Father, convince such souls tonight, O oh Lord. Amen. Save souls tonight. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Fill with thy spirit. Amen. Send thy word, O oh Lord. Amen. Give the auction, O oh Lord. Amen. Fill this house with thy power. Amen. Fill this house with thy glory. Amen. We know you will do more than this, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to our revival service for tonight. Um, for the schedule tomorrow, general morning prayer in this auditorium at 5.30. And then Bible teaching, actually the last Bible teaching for this camp meeting will be at 10. And then evening revival service as we are doing now at um, 7.30, just to um, remind you of that. Um, other reminders here, DVD and CD of the proceedings of this convention are available at the um, audiovisual stand of the um, gallery. Water baptismal service we hold, Lord willing, on Saturday as we have on our schedule. And we need to make adequate preparation for those that um, will be um, baptized, those who would like to be baptized. I want to encourage everyone who has been saved from your life of sin to take advantage of um, observing or subjecting yourself or submitting yourself to this ordinance of water baptism. So if you have been saved from your life of sin and you have not done water baptism before, we are asking that you please go to the camp office and register your intention to do so. Well, first of all, we need to say thank you to the Manchester group. You, you scored a uh, um, good mark, a very high mark. What is a very high mark? <laughs> but you score very high mark, anyway. Um, you did a good job. While still on the kitchen issue, it was uh, reported to me that 40 plates are missing. They are not stolen. Missing simply means that they have been taken from the dining hall to different homes. And they have asked me to announce that you should please return all these plates. You have your plates in your different dwellings, so please, we appreciate that perhaps for one reason or the other, some people may have to take their food away or to go and look after some people that may not be able to come to the dining. They are asking that we please return these plates. They are the striped ones. You, you know what you have taken for those who have taken. They actually brought one to me to look at very well because it is different from the one that we have in a different accommodation. So please, let us um, um, have that in mind and do something um, about it. You know, it is not over until God declares it is over. But the reality is that the committee is winding up, isn't it? So I want to encourage you. I think we did something like this last year, if you remember, when we encouraged every family to find time to gather together, especially parents, gather your children together, and your children are your children. I'm a child of some parents. So really, when I say children, I don't want that to be interpreted to mean little ones. I mean your children, whether they are 50 or 40 or 20, they are your children. So we want you to please try as much as possible to gather your children together, to pray together. Even you will notice that from the um, uh, teaching we had this morning, that is wonderful. I think that is challenging enough. And we should all take advantage of that. Uh, the kind meeting is winding up. I know the Lord has blessed already. But I still believe that the storehouse of God is still full. And is still ready to bless. So let's take advantage of that. We, we we're surely not very happy as we see people um, 
loitering about when you should be praying. Take advantage of this time. We are here for a serious business. Uh, not, not to play, but at the same time, of course, we are here for fellowship, but more importantly, to make sure that we have uh, our individual encounter with God. And I know the Lord is ready to do that for us. <clears throat> lost and found items. If you have lost some pounds, tell him. If you have lost some euro. If you have lost even mobile phone. Can you please report to the camp office and check? They will have their way of checking um, whether it is yours um, or not. Um, but that will take place. So please, lost and found, go to the camp office if you have lost any of this area. Okay, we have, um, we have been enjoying the uh, restaurant and we have our well-able uh, uh, um, people that are serving us, are looking after us, they're doing their best on top, of course, of all other different branches that have been helping. We have our supervisors there. One of the supervisors there, today is a special day for her. Yes. Today is her birthday. Yes. Sister Kofola, then is she around somewhere? She's always in that corner. Yeah. <laughs> we would like to wish her a very happy birthday, but I want to believe that she's not the only one for July. So, if you have your birthday in July, you mind? Could you please stand up? Okay, as you are standing up, Brad Godwin is getting ready to play for us as we would like to celebrate with you and sing happy birthday to you. At the end of that um, singing to wish you all happy birthday, we're going to then have Sister Kofola Dende to represent all of you, to give a brief testimony. Um, she actually got saved during our camp meeting in Liverpool. I cannot forget that. It was a wonderful experience, a wonderful change that happened um, in Liverpool when we used to use Liverpool for our committee. So she's going to represent all of you. Is that okay? Yes. You happy with that? Yes. Okay. She's going to do that. And then at the end of that uh, two minute testimony, we're going to have our people from Zim. <laughs> My wife told me later that um, somebody was asking her when I said Zim that which country, which, which country all over the world is that? Zimbabwe. I learned that too very late, that Zim, Zim. When I went there, everything is Zim, Zim, Zim. And I came back and I changed. Instead of twi twisting my tongue and my, you know, I can just say Zim. And that's all. Uh, they understand that. So the first special will come from uh, people from Zimbabwe. And then one or two of them who would like to give testimony we do so, and then we go straight to the second special before the word of the Lord tonight to come from Brother Banji. But before then, shall we have happy birthday? And we pray that the Lord God Almighty will bless you all. For honoring us. 
Thank you, Brother Adigun. Yes, 2001 was that special day. But before that day, we usually have um, youth camp. The young ones will go to camp and they'll come back bubbling, filled with uh, uh, this amazing joy. And I was always desiring that, Lord, I would like to get this. I've had testimonies, I've had sermons, I've had many things. But yes, I usually have a corner in the church that I like to sit. And every Sunday I'll go to that corner, I'll sit. At the end of the sermon, I'll get up and I'll go home. Yeah. But run up to this um, special period, I had sermons that I've heard before. But it meant a different thing at that Amen. time because Amen. the Lord was working on me. Amen. And then the church decided to have adult camp meeting. And I said, this one, I must go. Because every time the young ones go, they come up. So I did on, in 2001, and to the glory of God, with the help of many people. Uh, um, when when we, you go to the altar, you get people come around you to encourage you. Yes, there were many people who were encouraging me. In church, they were doing that. But they, they, you know, I will listen. I will just say, no, I'm not ready. And there was a particular sister, may her soul rest in peace. She was consistent in coming to me to encourage me. On this day, at, um, it was a, a, a young people's meeting. And that's why I love to always attend young people's meeting. And then I was there, and she came. She was coming towards me. But perhaps the spirit said to her, turn away from her. And as she turned away from her, my spirit said, wow, have I been given up on? Does that mean I cannot get saved? So that was what encouraged me. And I just blessed the name of the Lord. That at that period, that moment, the Lord saved my soul. There were some sisters with me that prayed with me. After salvation, at that same meeting, I was sanctified. And I pressed forward for baptism, but it didn't happen until two days after. I blessed the name of the Lord. He helped me, and he's sustaining me. Um, I praise him for all the good things he's done in my life, the ups and the downs, the many things. But this camp meeting, I have come for renewal, for rejuvenation, for revival. And I pray that by the time I come out of this camp meeting, I will be on, on, on fire for the Lord. Please continue to pray for me.
I'd like to thank God who has been wonderful in my life. If it was not God, I don't think I would be here. I was called to this gospel, gave my life to Christ, but through negligence, I lost my salvation. My God is a God of a second chance. And my second chance, I know God was, has been grateful. To be here and be alive, to me, is God's grace. He saved me, sanctified me, and baptized me with the Holy Spirit. After that, my life changed. Even those that I lived with who saw me knew that I had been changed. And God has taken me places that I am not very sure I can say this was me. It was only God that I saw doing life for me. I don't live for me. I live for God. And I thank God that my life after it was changed, he, made, he gave me a good home. He gave me a good home, a good husband. I thank God for the children he has given me. One is in heaven waiting for me. That is the way, that's why I want to work to be where God wants me to be all the time. I want to be where God wants me to be. I've come to this camp seeking God to bless my life, to change me, to help me. The blessings that I found at this camp are insurmountable. I can't count them. I'm still going because I know there's a desire in my life and I know that God will do it. Yes. All my desire is to say that at the end of my life, I don't want you God's people to come and stand and say she did good. I want God to be the witness to say I did good. That's my desire. I want to make heaven my home. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank God for He sanctified me. God baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Um, I met this gospel in a wonderful way. I wasn't brought up in a Christian family, but I, I want to thank God that God is a way of bringing people to Himself. Yes. And I give glory to His name. Amen. When I came uh, to this uh, camp meeting, I've been battling with um, an illness. But I want to thank God for His power to heal. Amen. And that God has touched me. And I'm looking up to him to continue to bless me. I want to thank God for the last um, um, few weeks that we went out to Portland. And God blessed me mightily. Um, I thank God for Jenny Messis. I was a bit um, nervous to go back to Portland. Because last year, I came back with um, an ailment. My ears were rumbling and drumming. And I thought it was the plain effect. And I thought maybe... I don't know whether if I go back again, I'll have the same problem. So I was praying and I said, God, I don't want this thing to happen to me again. And I want to thank God that this time around, I went and I came back, no problem at all. I give glory to God for that.
sanctified. Say amen. amen. If you want to be sanctified, say amen. amen. Jesus wants to hear it now and then. If you want to be sanctified, say amen. Spirit, say amen. amen. If you want the Holy Spirit, say amen. amen. Jesus wants to hear it. Now and then. If you want the Holy Spirit, say amen. If you want Jesus to heal you. chapter 14 verses 16 Luke chapter 14 verse 16 and we'll read onwards from there uh, 16 then said he unto them a certain man made a great supper and bade many and he sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden come for all things are now ready Amen. 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 That's a great invitation there. But 18 says, And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee. I pray thee. Have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, I pray thee, have me excused. Twenty, and another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Twenty-one, so the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and, 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 the, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. 22. And the servant said, Lord, it is done, as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. 23, and the Lord said 
unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel. Take note of that word. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. 24. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. May that not be your portion. Tonight, God is definitely going to bless you. The, 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 the only thing that's going to stop you from being blessed tonight is that fancy, wonderful, I'll call it in quote, very creative and cunning, cooked up excuse that you have become a master of. The fact that people send out invitations, it shows they have something to offer. Yeah. Our God has great blessings oh, to yeah. offer. Yeah. But the surprising thing is that human beings created in God's own image will turn down his offer and rather settle for something that is, is I would call it, Sub, substandard from what God expects but today the hat we're going to put on is the hat that says no matter what Amen. I am going to be blessed Amen. no matter what I am going to be blessed Amen. no matter what has happened to me in the past no matter what the devil has done, no matter what people are saying about me, no matter how bad I've ruined my life and everything doesn't make sense, no matter the dangerous levels I've gone to, the dungeons, the depths I've gone to, no matter what, God is coming for me tonight. Amen. Amen. One of the ancient landmarks this is not a good one because it, this is an ancient landmark that the devil himself planted. So I want you to be careful. This one must be removed. Amen. It started way back in the Garden of Eden. Man fell. We all know that. But what did God expect? Unfortunately, Man began to give excuses. It is the woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit. And then it's almost like Adam is blaming God for his sin. And also Adam is blaming Eve for his sin. And then Eve, who else am I going to blame now? Okay, the serpent. The serpent is to blame now. He beguiled me. And uh, the whole world gets messed up. And this ancient, deadly landmark of giving excuses, I call it the blame game, started. And ever since then, the devil's been a trickster. He has a tendency to trick you into giving excuses. And those excuses are suddenly building a wall. And this wall is becoming higher. And you're becoming better at giving these excuses. And you're almost becoming a specialist in giving excuses. And you see, the point I'm trying to make today is that every excuse you give is becoming better and better and better at blocking you from getting to heaven. And the thing about it is that because it's almost like a web, you are now tricking yourself into believing that you're okay. 
this, no, 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 this is so serious. You look good on the outside. People look at you. You look fine. You look good. Everything looks fine. You've come to camp meeting. People know you're coming to camp meeting. Everything's fine with you. But you've got a strategy in place because it takes a strategy to do this. But you've come so good at it. It's so perfect. No one can catch you. You always find a way of slipping out. It's a master plan. And you've become an artist, a con artist at excusing yourself from blessings. Who is, who is going to suffer for this? Who is going to bear the brunt of all this? At the end of the day, when God looks at you, no excuse is going to be good enough. None is go, it, 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 it won't hold any water. It won't hold no water in God's presence. And the thing about it is this. No matter how much people talk to you, you have a way of, you see, it doesn't matter how positive it becomes, how encouraging it becomes. In your mind, you have a way, you know, because you see, this human brain is powerful. You've got to be careful. 100 billion neurons are operating in this little skull. And if you're not careful, they will begin to connect on negativity and block you from your blessings. And every time you give an excuse, your neurons agree with you because you have the power. This is the choice God has given every human being. You have the power to determine what you're going to do on a daily basis. God is not going to do that for you. So even tonight, some of you already have fashioned out a new plan for tonight, for this service. For every service has been working out. The first day we came, you had one, it worked. Second day, it worked. For every service, you have a plan. And it seems to be working. But tonight, yeah. tonight, yeah. God is going to break it. Yeah. He will break it. Yeah. But he's going to need your cooperation. Yes. The cooperation God is going to need from you is now you need to say, I'm willing. Yeah. You see, listen, we often give excuses and we say, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. I don't think I can do that. In reality, what you're really saying is, I will not. But because Webster you know, I looked at four definitions of being excused. And the, one, the last one says, a pretended reason for conduct. So it's a pretext. You have a way of pretending. It, 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 and it's working. And anything that works, you get good at it. And your neurons, the 100 billion neurons, they begin to agree with you. That's where it becomes dangerous. Because whenever your own brain begins to tell you you are right... I think it was Shakespeare or someone says that he who is convinced against his own will remains unconvinced still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't make sense to you. You're okay. You're fine. Until one day you're plotting your graph to be excused from heaven. And then it will be too late. Yeah. And then it, and you, you see, the point about this is, I love the fact that people come to this place and I can tell you, people have made these oh, yeah. altars, they have made the altars destiny changers in their lives. Oh, yes. Yes. I know a young man, he was told to lead prayer. He looked saved, so Brother Shodik, but he's not God. He says, young man, you're leading prayer meeting tomorrow. Oh, yeah. The young man looks up, says, you don't know me. You don't know nothing about me. I might look saved, but I'm not a taint saved. Well, surely we're shocked. I must have made a mistake. Like Samuel must have tried to bless the seven sons or the eight sons. Like, to spirit it up the God. It has to be this one. It's that one. We're human. What can we do? But God sees your heart. Are you with me? Are you? God sees your heart. And, and the thing about it is this. The boy, the young man was so challenged that, whoa, they've expected a little bit more from me and, I've, and I, this is a little bit of a step down. Whoa, he, he must have gone to the altar. Yes, he says, God, bath me up. 
and I, I, you know, the, the, what I'm trying to say here is this. God's expectations of you are high. Yes. It, whenever you want to see someone change, don't, don't worry about what they've done in the past. Start seeing them in the way you want them to be. Amen. When you begin to project a positive a heavenly, a spiritual image in your mind, that's another thing God has given the power in the human brain. Whatever you visualize will be actualized. And so, Brother Shodipe had actualized this young man as saved. What was the resultant effect? He was forced. Remember the word compel. He was now compelled to live up to the higher standard. May you live up to the higher standard. We want to get to a point in our lives where we don't enjoy the husks anymore. That was the, de that was the design of the prodigal son. This was a child of a king, a rich man. And now he begins to feed on husks. But remember the prodigal son and what happened to him. This was not the time to give excuses. Things had gone really sour, yeah. like in your life. Sour. You know what I mean by sour? It looks good on the outside, but you know nothing is working. Nothing. It, like, like there was a guy who testified here. He said, the logistics of my life were in fault. Logistics. I, I, I must have gone to Norway. I looked at the pictures. His picture was on the wall, but he wasn't there. I shocked me. I said, what, what, what's, about, what's about this guy? They said he forgot his passport. What are you going to forget today? I pray today you Amen. will not, you will not cook up another excuse. Amen. You see, this is the kind of days that change your life forever. You know why? That's what camp meeting is designed for. I, you see that boy who Brother Shodikwe talked about? He got saved. Yes. He got sanctified. Yes. He got baptized. Yes. In the space of a few years, God fast-tracked him. Yes. Fast-tracked his life. Yes. Fast-tracked his career. Yes. He is now serving God in America. Amen. When he was here, he was so useful yes. that when he left, they had to close the whole center down. Talk about that. I, I, I imagine you feeling, I imagine you feeling, this is it. Yes. Not only me. All the men of God here, Amen. we imagine you making it. Amen. We see you in a new life, Amen. in a new way, Amen. with a new heart. Amen. In fact, there are some times we look at you, we're not looking at the dodgy things you're doing. We are, see, we are seeing the king in the kid. Because when David was small, even though he was a kid, there was a king in him. And that small little boy who the Bible says was ruddy, and he was so, you know, he, he, he kind of like, he smelled rustic because he'd been in the, in the fields. This was, a, this was a child that was meant for the palace. But at that time of his life, God needed to train him. To bring him up, to pass through trials, difficulties, to fit him where God needed him to be. A lot of what you're going through now, don't worry about the pains. There is a reason for it. Because I tell you, it will be worth it all. Amen. When he puts you through that tube, don't give excuses. As he's pushing you, go keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Just keep going. Because God's master plan is for you to be a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood, yes. a holy nation, yes. a peculiar people yes. who are called forth to show his praises. Yes. Praises. Yes. Everything you do, people would look at God and say, God is in him. Yes. Isn't that attractive? Yes. I listened to the teaching this morning. And I, and, I, and I saw uh, one of my, my brothers in, in, the, in the bathroom. And I said to him, honestly, we, we are free now. We, we need a project to get back one of us. Because one of us needs to come back. And I told him, I looked at his little son. I said, Chris needs to come back. I said, God brought Sheon Aramide back. God made him, fast-tracked him. Everything in his life changed. Amen. 
when his dad came here, he came on a mission. My son is coming back. No more excuses. Nothing. You know what God did for him? Buffed him up. Put him somewhere. He leads the team up there. He leads in a Bible center. His job. Ex Let me tell you, you don't know what God is going to do for you. Don't cut yourself short. God will fast track the years you missed out. So I looked at the other guy. These three guys, were, they were like gangsters on the day of their wedding. They crashed the car. But God is merciful. He's been doing this one by one. I said, look, listen, we need to get a project to get this last guy back. Because you know what? Time is short. And he said unto me, no, he didn't say unto me. That sounds like Jesus. He agreed with me and he said, this is our project for the new year. Amen. And I'm imagining Chris coming in camp meeting next year. So, so when it happens, don't be surprised because you all said amen. So shall it be. But tonight, the focus is back on you. Let me tell you one last thing. I, I don't know if they can bring out an image. If they can, if it's possible. If they bring out this image. Is it, is it possible? Oh yeah, it's okay. Let's see it. Let's see this image. All right, I just want you to read that. I just want you to read, read that because I can't see it from where I am, but I'm just going to try to see it. This is great stuff. This is from our Sunday school for children. This is for children, you know. It's a great thing where heritage we've got. It says, this is a great supper to be held in heaven for all those who have, been, who have believed in Jesus Christ as their Savior. It says, please mark your response to this invitation below. Now, this is where you come in. Are you going to say thank you for the invitation tonight and I accept with great pleasure? Or oh, are you going to do... Oh, no, no, no. Is this what you're going to do? Or are you going to go back? Where's the other one? Where's, that? Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Or are you going to say, I am sorry... I cannot attend. I must go to hell. And that other excuse, the one you're going to cook for tonight, you're going to put it in that gap. God forbid. Amen. Amen. So tonight, Amen. I want you to look at yourself, bring yourself, Amen. come over, confess, believe, and I tell you, God begins to repair all the bridges tonight. God bless you.
Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, what a privilege, what a wonderful invitation. We are gathered together, we are looking to heaven now, asking that you will please write our names in the book of life. Save soul tonight, answer prayers. So Lord, let us leave this place with joy in our heart. Thank you because you are going to answer our prayers as we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.